Download our new One Islam TV app and watch from a selection of thousands of videos with no ads. You can even watch our content offline. Download now from these platforms or visit www.oneislam.tv. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he grew in the home and as he grew a little bit older, he was looked after so well. You can imagine being brought up, not even equivalent to a presidential home. No, something beyond that. Someone saying, I am God. I am God. And Musa alayhi salam was brought up and Allah says, when he grew to a certain age, when he grew to a certain age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he uses the word ashud. He got to a certain peak. And Allah says, we granted him hukman wa ilman. Hukman meaning the ability to distinguish between what is right and wrong. That wisdom, that authority, that understanding and knowledge as well over and above that. And Allah says, this is how we recompense those who do good. Now those who did good, Allahu Akbar. The mother of Musa alayhi salam did good by obeying the instructions of Allah. And Musa alayhi salam himself being young, he had grown up firmly believing in his heart that this man here is not God and he's not even a part of God and he is nothing but a normal human being and he was intact within. He already knew who he was. He knew his true identity and he always worshipped the one and only creator. In the face of all this adversity and in the face of being of living within an environment that constantly reminded one of this person claiming to be God, he still maintained that belief of his and it was intact. This is the reward of Allah. So with us as well, no matter what environment we go into, our deen comes first. And let's make sure that nothing will shake our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing at all. And we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sacrifice in that regard as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He entered the city. Now he never used to go there often because he was from the elite considered. But when he entered the city, people would notice him immediately. So he went at a time when everyone was resting. Reported in the afternoon when they were resting, he came out. And he noticed two people fighting. This was from Banu Israel, the one. And the other one was from the people of Fir'aun who considered Fir'aun a god and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the power of this young man, he was still young. فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Musa alayhi salam went a little bit further and gave this man one blow. And this man was dead. He died. Imagine one blow. Look at how powerful this man must have been. Allahu Akbar. Now to determine your power and mine, let's not go blowing people inshallah. But look at how powerful Musa alayhi salam was. One blow, he did not intend to do anything more than fixing this man and trying to teach him a lesson. Hey, don't mess. But this went beyond what he had intended and it was unintentional completely. As soon as he saw this man drop dead, he says, Hada min amali shaytan, innahu adun mudillum mubin. This is from shaytan's handiwork. Remember we said blame shaytan? Yes. This is from shaytan's handiwork. The devil has done this. The devil is an outright enemy. He leads astray. Clearly, he is an outright enemy. So he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But there's a problem. Because now he's living in a little bit of fear. No one knows besides one man that he has done this, he went back. No one seen it. Everyone was resting. And what happened? 
Musa alayhi salam, the following day, he decided, let's go back into the city and see what's happening. So he went back the following day. And the next day, he seen two people fight again. And when he seen two people fight again, he noticed that the one who was from his people was the same man who was fighting yesterday. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا أَرَادَ أَن يَبْطِشَ بِالَّذِي هُوَ عَدُوٌ لَهُمَا قَالَ يَا مُوسَى Allahu Akbar When Musa alayhi salam wanted to go forth in order to deal with the crisis in a similar manner, this man says, O oh Moses, O oh Musa, أَتُرِيدُ أَن تَقْتُلَنِي كَمَا قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا بِالْأَمْسِ Do you want to kill me in a similar manner that you killed that man yesterday? Now everybody heard. Everybody heard. Cat is out of the bag. Oh Musa, you want to kill me just like you killed that man yesterday. Allahu Akbar. And he continued to say, In turidu illa an takuna jabbaran fil ardi, wa ma turidu an takuna min al muslihin. You only want to be a jabbar. A jabbar means a powerful tyrant. A tyrant. That's the right translation. In this particular context, when it's referring to a human being, it would mean it's a tyrant, one who has killed more than two people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى A man from the inner part of the city came running to Musa alayhi salam. He says, يَا مُوسَى إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكْ O Moses, O Musa alayhi salam, the chiefs, these big, big people, they are planning against you now. لِيَقْتُلُوكَ In order to kill you. They want to now kill you. فَخْرُجُ So please leave this city. Just go away and abscond. Leave. Now. إِنِّي لَكَ مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ I am definitely someone who's genuine. I have a genuine feeling for you. I'm advising you with sincerity. Nasiha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ So he left immediately. He didn't have time to prepare for this leaving. Not at all. Because Allah says, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا Soon as he was given this advice, he left. And he was gone out, walking out. Remember, he had not gone anywhere before this. So he didn't even know the roads very well. He just started walking. And he walked, it is reported, until his shoes were now worn completely and he had got somewhere. So imagine what distance he must have covered. فَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَ تِلْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَ قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ When he walked towards Madian, when he faced Madian, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him. Praying that, Ya Allah, guide me to the path. Guide me towards some goodness on this path. And Allah says, وَلَمَّا وَرَدَ مَا أَمَدِيًا وَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ أُمَّةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ يَسْقُونَ When he got to the, the well or the water of Madian, the place where they used to make their flocks drink from, the people of Madian, he saw this and he rested for a while. He'd seen everyone is making their flock drink water. He saw two women as well. From all the men who were making their sheep drink, he'd seen two women. And those women, they were slightly behind. They were at the back. They were not in the rush of all the men. So he asked them, he looked at them and he says, What is it with the two of you? Look at how they answered. Look at how they answered. They said, Look, we are not going to go and let our sheep drink or our flock drink until these people go back. And our father is an elderly man. Why did they add the second part of the statement? He didn't ask them, is your father old or young? Because primarily it's a man's job. So before he develops any thoughts, they thought, let's clarify it to say, look, the reason why we as women are standing here with these sheep 
and not the men of our house because our father is very old. So here we've learned also, subhanallah, the role of a male in the home and in the case where it is not being fulfilled for some reason of this nature, here you have an answer that is given by these women saying this is why we are now fulfilling it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. So he decided, okay, you people can sit down. Let me do something. He went, he got some buckets of water and he let all this flock drink. All of them, he did it himself. And they, they took their flock and they went home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in a beautiful way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا ثُمَّ تَوَلَّا إِلَى الظِّلْ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ He had made these or this flock drink of the two women and then he reclined in the shade and he made a dua to Allah saying, Oh Allah, I am in need of any goodness that you send in my direction. I'm in need of goodness. I need something now. I need your help, Ya Allah. Obviously, he needs a home. He needs a place. He needs food. He needs clothing. He needs so many things. He's a stranger there. People don't know him. And at the same time, he needs shelter. And as he's making this dua, he notices something. Allah says, Subhanallah. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا One of the two women who were there moments ago, whom he had helped, is walking back. In a very modest way, she's walking back. Now what did she want? She came all the way to him and she says, إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجَرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا My father is calling you in order to give you a reward. For what you did for us in that you made our flock drink. So my father would like to see you. Allahu Akbar. So this he knew immediately. I made a dua to Allah. There's something now coming in my direction. Goodness. So he went. Now it is reported. It is reported that she was of such a modest level. And he was even higher than her. That he instructed her. It is said. Allahu A'lam. That Look, your home, I don't know where it is, but you walk behind me and guide me left or right. And I'll walk in front of you. Just so that his eyes did not gaze around here and there. Musa alayhi salam. And what happened as a result? She knew this man is very pure. He's honest. Another thing is he's very, very hard working. Because we'd seen the work he did. And he was stronger than all these men. We finished so quick today. And that's why when we went back, our father asked us, how come you'd finish so quickly? And then they had told the story. And he said, go back and call this man. And let's give him something in return. He can't just do that for free. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is reported by some of the historians that this man was Shu'aib alayhi salam. And this was Madian. This was also a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Madian. This is what is reported. Obviously, this is not in the Quran, nor is it in the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. But the ulama and the historians from amongst the Muslimin as well are of the opinion, the bulk of them, that this was Shu'aib alayhi salatu wa salam in Madian. So Musa alayhi salam goes there and he narrates the stories. What stories? How he was born and what happened and who Fir'aun is and what he does and what he did and so on and why he had to come. And when he heard the stories, he says, La takhaf, don't fear, Najota, you have been saved. You have been saved from those from the people who are oppressors. You've been saved from these oppressors. Don't worry. Come. So one of the young girls tells the father. One of the young girls tells the father, Oh my father, why don't you employ him? It is definitely best to employ someone who is strong and honest. Hard working and honest. 
And these two qualities to this day, if you want to employ someone who has these two qualities, your business will flourish by the will of Allah. If you have someone who's absolutely honest, but they're lazy, they're not hardworking. What happens? Your business slides. MashaAllah, the youngsters of today, come 11 o'clock, they're still snoring. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Sometimes I sit and I think, you know, we're going to have, nowadays we say 8 to 5. Soon it's going to be 1 to 8. Because the youngsters just don't get up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. And if you have someone who's very, very hard working, but he's not honest, what happens? It's a hole in the bucket, mashallah. As you're carrying it, it's releasing. So you're carrying it because you're very powerful, but you're just letting it drop as it's going. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This man was honest and hard working at the same time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Musa alayhi salam was told by this man, Shu'aib alayhi salam, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُنْكِحَكَ إِحْدَ بْنَتَيَّ هَاتَيْنِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَأْجُرَنِي ثَمَانِيَ حِجَجِ فَإِنْ أَتْمَمْتَ عَشْرًا فَمِنْ عِنْدِكَ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَيْكَ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Shu'aib tells this man I want to get you married to one of my two daughters here on condition that you serve me for eight years. You work for me for eight years. Please, let's not get ideas here. <laughs> you don't tell your son-in-law work for me for eight years. This we are talking of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent as a blessing to Musa alayhi salam in the time of his need. And there was nothing wrong with it. And even up to this day, if someone really tells you that, and that's what they want from you, well, that's their condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us people who make easy marriage and not difficult. Whenever there is marriage, the hadith of Prophet says, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيدٌ If someone comes to you with a proposal, whom you are satisfied with their level of deen and character then get them married if you are going to hinder it there will be great corruption on earth and vice so don't hinder may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us inshallah the understanding and inshallah the ability to distinguish between what is beneficial for us and what is detrimental so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he says you work for me eight years and if you want to complete 10 whole years, then that is from your own goodness. And inshallah, you will find me being a person who is also good inshallah. You know, like the employer telling the employee and vice versa to say, don't worry, I will also be good to you. You also, you work properly inshallah and we have a good relation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give too much detail of how the working went. But what we do know for sure is he was now a shepherd and he had a flock and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trained him. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma min nabiyyin illa wa ra'al ghanama. I think I mentioned this hadith at the beginning that every nabi of Allah has been at some stage a shepherd where Allah has tested them and trained them through animals because the amount of patience you need with animals is far more. So now when you are sent to human beings to speak to them, it will be much easier for you to deal with human beings after you've been dealing with animals who couldn't even understand your language. So Musa alayhi salam received this training for 10 whole years. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentions to us that from the two, he had served the longer and the better, the one which was more complete. And after that, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he got married, mashallah, he was very happy. He took his wife and now he wanted to go. Something within him told him, I need to go back home to see my folks and so on. And this was the opening of a whole new chapter in the life of Musa alayhi salam. Inshallah, tomorrow we have an appointment with that. Until we meet again, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Experience the beauty of Islam and bring happiness into your life with our app One Islam TV. You will have access to a wide variety of interesting documentaries, inspiring lectures, and so much more. Download One Islam TV from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.